My wife has been texting, calling, emailing me nonstop asking for forgiveness and a second chance. What's going on, everybody? Hope everybody's feeling good. Hope everybody's doing well. We are back with another story post. Guys, I'll put this up on the screen if you want to check it out. But you guys read the title. Let's just get into it. So, Reddit Surviving Infidelity. Wife had three-year affair with her college professor. She claims she was brainwashed by him. Wow. Wow. Hi everyone, this is really hard post to write, but it feels therapeutic to write this out. Hopefully I can get some advice along the way. My wife and I have been married for almost 10 years. We are both in our 30s, mid 30s. A few years ago, she decided she wanted to go back to college and get her master's degree. We both thought it was a good idea. Our married life was great and we were both very happy. It was the happiest I had ever been. When she started going back to school, life obviously got busier because she had more on her plate. After a few months, her behavior started to change. She'd stay out later than normal to study at the university library, or she'd meet up with people from class for various projects. Sometimes she'd forget something at the office and have to go get it. Even though it was late, I had a feeling something was off, but I had no proof. Everything she said made sense. Sometimes I would verify things or try to find inconsistencies, but nothing. Everything seemed normal. I just thought I was being paranoid. One Saturday morning, I sat down to check my emails. We share a home computer, which she sometimes uses for homework. I noticed she forgot to log out of her account from the night before. Before logging her out, I see tons of emails from one person. I didn't recognize the name. So I went to her Facebook and Instagram accounts to see if she was friends with this guy. Nope. So I googled him and it turned out it was her college professor. He was in his mid-50s, married, and had three teenage kids. It looked like he was happily married. I was relieved and didn't think much else about it. The email seemed innocent. I remember when I was in college, I emailed back and forth with professors all the time. From then on, I never noticed anything suspicious. Again, I thought I was being paranoid. Some time goes by and life gets easier. She was really hitting her stride with school and she wasn't as stressed or busy anymore. We had more time together and we started building a house. Life was essentially on, on cruise control. Until the nightmare began, it was a Thursday and I decided to come home early and surprise her because I wanted us to go out for dinner at this new place that just opened. As I was driving down our street, I noticed a car pulling out of my driveway. We passed each other and I immediately recognized the guy. It was her old college professor. So I immediately go inside the house and found my wife standing in the kitchen wearing just a towel. Wow. She was so stunned that she didn't even know what to say. Like she was fumbling her words, asking me why I was home. I immediately was asking why her professor had just left our house and why was she in a towel. She told me I was, I was overreacting and nothing had happened. So I went straight up to our bedroom and she tries to stop me. When I got to our room, it was obvious what had just happened. I told her I was going to contact his wife if she didn't tell me everything. Finally, she broke down and admitted it all. They had been having an affair on and off for three years. She said it started the semester after she left his class. But she claims that she was brainwashed by him and that she didn't really want to do it. She said he was in a position of power, even though he wasn't her professor anymore. She's lying and claims she was manipulated into a sexual relationship over a three-year period. It's been a week since I found out. I moved my stuff out that next morning when my wife was at her parents' house, and I contacted a divorce attorney. I feel like a zombie. None of this even seems real. 
My wife has been texting, calling, emailing me nonstop asking for forgiveness and a second chance. Her family's trying to contact me as well as to convince me to give her another shot. Today I finally blocked her on everything and her family. Fortunately, I have a great support system and everyone has been super helpful. I'm going to schedule an appointment with a therapist next week so I can get the ball rolling. I know it will take time to heal and I know I deserve better. Sorry for the long post. I really needed to get this off my chest. Wow, let me give my thoughts. First off, salute to you for making the right decision. I'm out of here. We're getting a divorce. You didn't sit there and let her lie to you. You said, nah, something don't feel right. Tell me what happened. Tell me what happened or else. She told you. You found out. You moved accordingly. You got your stuff and you got the heck out of there. You got a divorce attorney. Nice, man. Salute to you. Shame. She's a liar. He made me do it. He brainwashed me. Guys, I promise you, there's so many reasons why you shouldn't mess with a married woman. That's one reason right there. She gets caught by her husband. She can lie on you. Trying to save face. She know. She, she saw power when she was being taught by him. And she loved it. And she wanted it. She didn't, she, he didn't force her to do anything. The darn shame, man. Guys, let me know what you think about this in the comments. Whew, pitiful. I'll catch you guys at the next one. I am very sexually attracted to my husband's friend. Mm -hmm. Me, a 32-year-old female, and my husband, 31-year-old male, have a friend named Aaron, he's 30 years old male, whom we met him through a mutual friend. We have been friends with him for about two years, and we have all become pretty close, seeing him once a week or more pre-pandemic. Obviously, the pandemic has changed how frequently we, we hang out. I should also make it known that Aaron and I do not have a friendship separate of my husband. We are more of a trio. Before Aaron and his longtime girlfriend split up, we were a group. The problem is that I find him extremely physically attractive, and I feel immense sexual tension when he is around. It's strange because he is not someone I would ever want to be in a relationship with. We do not vibe on a romantic level whatsoever, but I am very sexually attracted to him. He does not flirt or show any sort of attraction towards me at all, and never has. I would never cheat on my husband. I couldn't do something so awful to him. My husband is also incredibly attractive and I love him more than anything. But I find myself daydreaming of being with Aaron, even imagining with him and my husband. I don't want any advice. I'll never act on these feelings, nor will I ever speak of them out loud. I just wanted to put them into writing. Dang, man can't even bring your friends around you can't even bring your friends around without her going "Ooh, i chose the wrong one. Oh man if i could just have one night with him that is messed up and here's the thing though she says that she's very attracted to her husband he's even what she wants in a man she says this aaron guy is not who she would be in a relationship with and she would want to be in a relationship with her husband, who she's married to, and she loves it. But she fantasizes about cheating on him. Wow. Never enough. She clearly said her husband is what she likes and what she wants. And it's not enough. A shiny new toy came along. And she said, ooh, that one looks fascinating. I want it. I want it. I want it. Mm, mm, mm. I feel so bad for the husband. He has to deal with this. He has no idea she feels this way. I'm pretty sure eventually it'll come out. Eventually she'll slip up. She'll get, she'll drink and whatever. She'll try something. Hopefully his friend is a good dude, man. Hopefully his friend is someone like, nah, I'm not trying to do that with you. I'm going to let my homeboy know, you know, 
Um, hopefully. You can only hope. But uh, there's a chance he could be one of those guys. Yeah, you want me? Okay. I won't say anything. It, it, it's a possibility. And it, it's messed up, man. Because this guy, she's married to him. This is her husband, not her boyfriend. This is her husband. And she fantasizes about other people. Man, I, all I have to say is, is it worth it? Seriously. Like, she seriously said... He's what I want in a husband. This other guy is not what I want. But I still want to be with him. I still want to sleep with him. Really? Disgusting. Guys, let's check out another story. Alright guys, we got another post here. I cheated on my boyfriend and want to come clean, but don't know how. I, female 20 years old, have a confession to make. I cheated on my boyfriend, Mel, 28, a few times, and I want to come clean. So, some backstory. I know you are all going to jump on the age gap, so let me explain. My boyfriend and I met when I was 18 and he was 25. I was just finishing up high school and was a youth delegate at a convention when we met. We hit it off, exchanged numbers, and stayed in touch. As I was looking for a career and university advice, I contacted him frequently, and we developed a strong affinity and connection. Over time, this grew into a mutual feelings. After another friend of mine, also female 18 then, who I guess also became his friend, forced us to admit our feelings. She was the type who could figure these things out. So then we started dating. Our relationship over that summer went well. He had never been in a relationship before while I have had some teen dates, but nothing serious. Now again, you might think someone being 25 and never having had any relationship would be a red flag, but in this case, it was pure false alarm. He was an amazing partner, being respectful and kind and never once pushing boundaries. I love having an older boyfriend who who already was on his way up in his career. It made me feel special that a man with a good job saw something in me, a young woman who just graduated high school. His mentorship, advice, and desire to see me succeed made him both a partner, but also a mentor, something which made things really special. Anyway, that summer we didn't progress beyond kissing and I went off to a university. He visited me regularly and attended all college balls with me. My college is a bit formal and traditional, in that regard. He helped me manage school and extracurriculars, helped me study, aided my political ambitions. We also got closer intimately. Our first time was in a nice hotel room after the first year finals. It really felt like he was taking me on our honeymoon. Our relationship was amazing, but something was missing. University is normally a time when people explore themselves and really enjoy themselves. Plus, as sad as it is, being sexually active with the right people is needed to resume, build, and advance. Student politics is quite a big deal at my college due to a lot of overambitious people here. So I did things I deeply regret and had affairs with other guys. It started small, overly long, and romantic like hugs with guys to get political votes. But soon it worsened. I was willing to do things to get ahead. Started with some kissing but soon went beyond. On four different occasions, I did it with powerful guys to help boost my political career. Again, college level politics and status is a really big deal here. At that time, I felt I was doing what needed to be done and what everyone does. But soon after, I started regretting it. I'm just finishing up my third year of undergrad and I'm realizing how stupid it was. Not stupid politics. I do very much care about my college affairs but how it was stupid to sell out my values and betray my loving boyfriend for personal ambition and resume padding. I tried to justify it by telling myself that I'd use connections to land him a better job, or if I got one myself, I'd be sure to spend more money on him. But those were just excuses. I was wrong, I admit it. I messed up and need help. How do I come clean? To sum everything up, I cheated on my boyfriend in undergrad, including getting it in with four people. I deeply regret it. How do I come clean? Wow. Let me give my thoughts. Selfish, selfish, selfish. So she says she found this guy 
who she loves. He was great for her. He's perfect, right? Perfect guy. Everything she wants. But she, she has to think about her career. She says he has a great job. Um, he, you know, he, he, she, she, she's amazed that he's willing to, you know, give her a shot when he has everything going for himself. And she puts all that at risk just to save her future career. You know why? Because she doesn't believe in him still. No, I, I need to look out for myself and my own career. So she does disgusting things to help her career. You sleep around to try to level yourself up. And the biggest spit in the face too, she said, well, I thought I used this as an excuse. She did say she used it as an excuse, but she considered, well, if I get, you know, in a good position and get a good job when I graduate, I'll help him get a better position. What? <laughs> so you're going to go to one of the guys possibly that you slept with and say, hey, can you get my husband a job? Can you get my boyfriend a job? Uh, yeah. What, what you going to do for me? Would you going to do it again so he can get the job? You want to promote. So are you going to do this? This is showing your character. When you get into a position, let's say you make make whatever you make and you're happy with your salary and you go, what you're going to go to your boss and say, I want to raise. I've done this for the company. I've done that. I want I want to be management. I want to work my way up the ladder. And he's going to say, OK, I, you know. You know what happened in, in college. Are you going to you gonna do it again? Like, is that how you're going to keep elevating yourself? Really? Why would you do that to yourself? Like, that's just disgusting. Yes, yeah, that's, that's pretty pitiful. I'm sorry. That's pretty pitiful. I'm not saying don't go to school or whatever you want to do for your career. If you want to have a career, have a career. That's completely fine. But the way you're going about elevating in your career and even having a career period it's silly it's it's really silly and it's disgusting and it, you don't you don't deserve that guy you know that guy needs to you need to let him know and he needs to leave you because you're just you're you're, you're showing who you are you're somebody who would do things like that just to elevate your career